Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the United Stand. Sorry, couldn't get my words out there. Hope everybody is well and okay. It's me, Faz, back with another show on the United Stand. I hope um, all of you are doing well today on this fine evening. Lots of news have come out um, online on Manchester United uh, this evening, this afternoon, that really hasn't um, helped us uh, lift our moods. But uh, not to worry, not to worry. I want to have a very constructive, I want to have a very good discussion with you all today. I want to have a open discussion with you all today about everything that's going on with the club. Um, today is not about overreacting. Today is not about um, going going crazy and, you know, reacting uh, out of the... Out of the ordinary today is about being logical and today is about being united today on the 16th of august is about being united let's all uh, have an open conversation i want to start the stream obviously that i'll cover the topics that i want to talk about um the first thing is i want to talk about is the Amrabat blow, Sofian Amrabat blow. That's the first one. Then I will also talk about Gravenberg being linked with Manchester United. There's uh, some quotes that have come out um, from Aaron Wan Bissaka from official channels as well that I'll get onto. I'll touch on Eric Bailly uh, and what's going on with the situation with him leaving Manchester United. And then I'll obviously touch on the biggest news that has come out today about Mason Greenwood. So we will have lots to talk about. About. Lots to talk about indeed. Um, for the people who are not aware, uh, Ma Mark is um, on holiday. So yeah, unfortunately for some of you who want your daily fix of Mark, Mark is not here. He's enjoying his holiday rightfully so. Um, but yeah, I'll be covering all the latest news. Let's start off with this one. The most um, latest news on Manchester United reporting from 90 Minute Football. Uh, Amrabat is growing agitated with the hold up of his potential move to Manchester United, but the club hope to make a breakthrough on Van der Beek's departure in the coming days, opening the door for them to sign a new midfielder. So, yeah, um, as it stands, Sofian Amrabat and his representatives obviously feel frustrated with what's going on with Manchester United. Um, you know, normally big clubs, they don't make deals like this in terms of delaying it. They want a player, they go and get the player. But when it comes to Manchester United, it's always Dilly Dally FC. That's what I call it. It's always Patience FC. It's always Wait and See FC. It's always um, something something going on in the background that's not done and the play is delayed. Season started and one of the key players that we want is Sofian Amrabat that we identified is not being signed by Manchester United. And the craziest thing of it all is... Liverpool, who have absolutely been embarrassed in this transfer window, could actually get one up on us whilst not being in Champions League position. They've been totally embarrassed by Chelsea in the window. They've they've tried to spend uh, the big bucks to try and get Caicedo. They tried to spend money to try and get Lavia. They've been totally rejected. You know, there was talks about them trying to get Mason Mount. But you know what I want to mention is who remembers that there was reports coming out that Sofian Amrabat would much rather pick Manchester United over Liverpool. Do apologise, I don't remember the reports of where it came from, but I do remember, I have selective memory, <laughs> but I did keep a, screen, uh, a, a screenshot in my head of the report, which was Sofian Amrabat picks Manchester United over Liverpool. But you have to think, where does the player stand from a player's perspective? He probably wants to come to Manchester United desperately. He does. Why wouldn't he? We're in Champions League spot and he knows he can bring some attributes and he's probably going to get a lot of minutes. Originally, I will hold my hand up, by the way, because I can. I'm logical, you know, at times. I will hold my hand, hand up. I didn't think Sofian Amrabat was going to play that many, that much minutes in Manchester United. I thought he was going to come and, and play like, 10, 15 starts, maybe 10 to 12 starts, and then cover as a sub on the bench. But I think looking at our last game against Wolves, I actually think Sofian Amrabat would be utilised in the Premier League a lot more. I do. Um, so I think, you know, 
it's important that Manchester United get this deal over. But what's scaring me a bit here is, I mean, 90 minute football is reliable. I wouldn't say they're, they're the most unreliable, uh, obviously not. But uh, the fact that the players get in agitated can only mean, you know, it's a big time move to the Premier League for him. And, and if Liverpool are now desperate because they have been made, in, you know, they have been made to look like a fool in the market. On top of that, Liverpool fans are desperate. They've missed out on numerous players. There's pressure on FSG from the fans. Liverpool would want to do the signing as soon as possible. And by the way, they have the money. They have the money. We, on the other hand, need to sell or need to do something with Donny van der Beek to then get Amrabat in. That's where the issue is. That's where the problem is. The problem is in Manchester United can go and buy Amrabat and then deal with Donny van der Beek. The problem is Manchester United need to have some solid transactional kind of agreement with Sociedad or whoever to see where Donny van der Beek is going. That's where the problem lies. Amrabat is a must for United, says uh, says Big Dave. Make sure you get your comments in as well. Let me know with Super Chats what you think and, and your opinions on this as well. I am not overreacting. I am not going to start going and saying, oh, we're finished, we're finished, because I can do that very easily. You, the community, know me very well. All of you here in the community know me very, very well. News like this will make my head blow off. But today, I want to have a logical conversation with you all. I want to remain calm because the window is still open. Because you all tell me all the time after every stream, Faz, be positive, be uplifting, you know, don't overreact. So I'm not going to overreact. I think Manchester United are still in the race, obviously, and they can still manage to make it happen. But I do fear, I do fear uh, Liverpool's desperacy in the market. Uh, Fabrizio as well reports, I want to bring this up, Fabrizio says Liverpool are now informed on Sofian Amrabat as AD reported, um, which is another, um, I think, Dutch um, reporting outlet. Uh, no formal bid made yet, just contact to be informed on conditions of the deal. No decision made yet, Liverpool are still exploring the market to pick new favourite DM. So that's what it is. There's you know, no official bids. Let's all stay calm. There's no official bids. There's no, there's no um, talks in terms of advanced stages. Nothing as as such. Liverpool have identified him. They do like him, but also don't forget they like Gravenberg as well. There is reports that I'll touch on where Liverpool and Manchester United are rekindling their interest in Gravenberg. Um, but yeah, that's from Fabrizio Romano. So obviously Fabrizio's um, you know, putting it out there, then I think it will most definitely be be solid. Um, which one was the other one as well? Um, yeah, 90-minute football also says Manchester United want to confirm another midfielder's departure before triggering Amrabat transfer. So two out, one in. That's that's the situation at the moment. We need two players out, which would have been one is Fred, one is Donny van der Beek to go and get another player. Uh, AD Sport World, I think that's how you pronounce their name. I apologize. I'm not good with pronunciations, but uh, they're a Dutch outlet, um, AD.NL Sport, Sport World. Uh, Liverpool are on track to finalize a deal for Sofian Amrabat. I don't know how a Dutch reporting outlet can have more information on a Moroccan player and a scouse team. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't know, but that's what they're reporting. Um, I hope I'm gonna take I'm gonna take it with a pinch of salt. I, I hope that's not the case, and I hope Manchester United see it and actively try and work something out. That's the most important thing. Couple of super chats that I want to address quickly. Uh, let me just bring them up. Uh, Rasik says, "Hi, Faz. Hope you're well. I am. I am well. Thank you. Hope you're well as well." Um, Rasik says, "Is it true that Liverpool?" Fool as trying to sign Sofian Amrabat. Can we go for Kudos or Ryan Gravenberg? Your thoughts? I like Kudos a lot. I like uh, Gravenberg a lot. I'll be honest. I don't. I don't want to rattle people or upset people. But I will give you my opinion. I prefer Gravenberg over uh, Amrabat. I prefer Kudos over Amrabat. They're both younger players. Um, they, they, they both have extremely great qualities that we can bring into this club, especially Gravenberg. I mean, if a player like Gravenberg is up for grabs, that's a player that we should 100% be all over. I would love to bring Ryan Gravenberg into Manchester United, but the question remains is the price tag as to how much he would be to bring in to Manchester United. That's kind of my concern. 
I think uh, Bayern Munich has obviously brought him um, from Ajax. I don't know how much Bayern would want. Um, I, I, and Manchester United, you know, they wanted Pavard as well. So are they going to talk about maybe seeing if they can make a joint deal? I don't know. Loads of options available, but those are smart options that Manchester United can't do. And to think you want to get Sofian Amrabat and mold him. Telag was already working with Gravenberg in Ajax, so he knows the player. I'm a big fan of Gravenberg. I really am. I really am. But I don't know how much Bayern would want after just buying him after one season. How much do you think he, you know, Bayern would, would be asking? 30, 40, 50 million? I don't know. Um, I can't put a price tag on it. It's, it's down for negotiation. But I hope Manchester United can see if there is a deal to be made. One of the reports, though, on Gravenberg that I want to bring it up, that I, I, I noticed as well, Santi, it comes out of Santi uh, Aona, who says Ryan Gravenberg is still on Manchester United's list and is open to playing in the Premier League, although have not met, have not yet made an offer. So again, no offer. This is just... Um, this is just Manchester United have an interest and they have interest in so many players. So, again, I take it with a pinch of salt. In this market, what's what's definitely taught me one thing. I remember Mark mentioning this uh, on one of the shows. He's saying the Maguire exit, he will not believe it until it's actually gone through. And that's what prime example is. Until a deal is actually here we go or actually like the players here arrived. I think we can't we can't get excited. I'm really sorry. Um, I like that Manchester United are interested in such a great, fantastic player, but clearly the price tag will put us off because we won't be able to afford it unless we let some players go. Uh, and in terms of affording as well, I just want to quickly touch on this. Eric Bai. There's a bit of news on Eric Bai reported uh, by Yazik. Um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce his surname, but. Uh, uh, Yajik uh, is the reporter, uh, says Eric Bailly requested a loyalty bonus of 700,000 euros to terminate his deal at Manchester United. The club do not want to pay this and talks have fallen through. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Harry Maguire wants a payout of 15 million. And Eric Bailly clearly saw that and... Uh, after seeing that, he thinks he can request 700,000 euros. Lord, absolutely have mercy on Manchester United. 700,000 euros he wants. You know what? That's, that's, uh, that's, uh, pay him. I'd say with the 700,000 euros isn't a lot in comparison to some of the wages that the, some of the players are on. But it's one of those Manchester United can't afford to lose a single penny at all. What do you guys think? Should Manchester United pay Eric Bailly 700,000 euros? I mean, admin, if you're here, can you do a poll? Because 700,000 euros is, is, is very low. It's very, very low. That's not even a million. Should we just pay Eric Bailly and, and create that space for someone else, get him off the wage, uh, wage bill and uh, bring in someone else? Again, he's not at all anywhere near the squad. He's, he's, he's not even in match days. So we've not seen him travel with the team anywhere. He's clearly going to depart. He's clearly going to leave. Should we just pay and, and get rid of... Uh, I don't want to say rid. Again, I apologise. I don't like using that word because I actually like Eric Bailly as well. But shall we part ways with um, Eric Bailly? 700k? I don't know if admin is here, if they can do a poll. A couple of more super chats I want to I wanna go through. Kaiser, thank you very much for staying a member for five months. Says, could see this coming a mile away, to be fair. All because all because a big, big lump won't leave our club. Yeah. Um, David, thank you very much for staying a member for seven months. Says, we should have taken the 30 million from McTominay and we would have the cash for Amrabat. You know what? I hold my hand up as well. Again, I can hold my hand up, by the way. I was one of the individuals who was hell-bent that we should have sold um, we should have sold Scott McTominay for 40 million. And looking back at it now, I think we could have we should have taken the 30 million deal. We should have taken the 30 million deal. Poll is up. Thank you. Thank you, people, for telling me. Um yeah, we should have taken the 30 million for Scott McTominay and part and again parted ways and let Scott go and play loads of minutes at West Ham. I was the remember I remember saying blatantly Scott McTominay is worth 40, Scott McTominay is worth 40, no less. But I hold my hand up. I think 30 million, we should have taken it. We should have taken it. Because that would have helped us now. We wouldn't have been in a situation where Amrabat 
is, you know, doubt in his move to Manchester United. So, yeah, I, I, I'll hold my hand up on that. Uh, poor deal. I'm, I'm glad I'm not the one negotiating things. Uh, thank you very much for your contribution as well, uh, Mama. Uh, Pritesh says, it's not easy supporting this club. It, it isn't. But, you know, you have to be here through the thick and thin. And that's the marriage that we are in. That's the, that's the bond that we have signed up for. It's not going to be easy until the Glazers leave. It's not going to be easy until this board leaves. Javi Simmons, someone's mentioned on, uh, Joshua mentioned Javi Simmons. I really like Javi Simmons. Oh my goodness. I absolutely love Javi Simmons. Really, really do. Uh, Will Fell, thank you very much for the contributions as well. Um, Alpha says, Fast, talk about how certain Reds make international fans feel like outcasts because of some troll opinions. We have the biggest fan base, but never united. And it is a very, very sad thing. It is a very, very sad thing because I I know many fans who reach out to me on social media who, you know, again, not being big-headed or anything as such, but fans reach out to me from all across the world saying, Faz, I'm coming to Old Trafford. How can I... How can I come and see the players coming in? How, where do I get a shirt signed? Listen, I've done, I, I've done private messages for fans from players. I do everything I can to, to help a fan feel the best. I try and make sure, you know, fans, they can have a good experience. They don't get scammed. They can go to the best food places, everything. Um, and, and, and I love that about our club. You know, I absolutely love that when I go to a match day to see my players come in, that I see a fan from LA, I see a fan from Turkey, I see a fan, fan from uh, India, China, Japan. It's so nice. How cool is it to share the same liking with someone who is seven seas away from you? How amazing is that? Imagine a random person, you go to a random country, like, I don't know, Kazakhstan, and you're wearing this top. And because you're wearing this top, you share a bond with someone there. How cool is that? If you ask me, that's freaking amazing. That's, that's amazing. Someone says, Fabrizio tweet. I'm just going to bring it up. Sorry, guys. Thank you for letting me know. Let me just uh, see what... Is there any tweet from Fabrizio? I'll just bring it up. Bear with. Let me see what our very own Fabrizio Romano has tweeted. Uh, is there anything? No, I don't think there's anything. No, there's nothing on Manchester United. Someone said Fabrizio tweet, read the chat. Exclusive, Liverpool submit. Oh, okay, wait, 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 wait. Liverpool submit a formal bid to sign Japanese midfielder Wataru Endo on permanent deal. Negotiations ongoing with Stuttgart. Player wants to move as its biggest opportunity of his career. Surprising move by Liverpool director. Ooh, very interesting. Thank you very much, chat. I appreciate that community. I appreciate that. Sofian don't want Liverpool. <laughs> I have a smile on my face. Come on. God is good. <laughs> Drop some. I don't know if there's a seven up or, or clapping emojis in the chat because Liverpool clearly got declined by Sofian Amrabat. Hold that, Liverpool. Hold that. Swivel on it and suck on it for sure. Uh, Sofian Amrabat to Manchester United, probably it's clear, absolutely clear. Now we can we can definitely make this deal happen. Let's try and get Donny van der Beek across the line. I wish Donny van der Beek nothing but the utmost success and well wishes at his next club. But let's go and move forward with our midfield. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Liverpool, suck on it. I can't stand Liverpool. They can hold that. They can absolutely hold that. Ab Amrabat is a red, that's for sure. And listen, who would want to live in Liverpool anyway? Manchester's well nicer. Manchester's well nicer. Um, but yeah, where was I? There's a couple of more super chats I want to quickly address. Loads of super chats today. Thank you very much for the support, everyone. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I love, I love fans from all across the world. Love it. Um, Joshua says, "Why are United not looking at Ndidi and Iheanacho? Iheanacho, I mean, we need a, we need a striker, loan someone." Who else would you sign in midfield, Faz? I mean, look, Will, you're, you're asking me a question and, and I'll probably give you names that we can't afford or we're not we're not in a position to get. Like I said before, Xavi Simmons, Gravenberg, I like, I, I absolutely, f I, I fancy Frankie de Jong. 
I'm not even going to lie to you. I mean, I, 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 I might be bugging, but I actually just fancy, at this point, I fancy Frankie de Jong because he will just take us to a different level. And it's such a shame that Frankie de Jong doesn't want to come to Manchester United. But, you, you know, Cheryl Cole, uh, I think Cheryl Tweedy, I think her surname is, if I'm not mistaken. Cheryl has a famous song, uh, You Gotta Fight For Your Love. You have to fight for your love. And I want to fight for my love. And yeah, Frankie de Jong is the love of my life. I'll be honest. I can't, I'm not going to sit here and act any different. You, you all know me. I'm, I'm a very honest man. I think Frankie de Jong would love Manchester United and we, I, I would love Man him as well and all of you would. Um, so yeah, what if Mason Greenwood comes out and offers a public apology? I'll touch on that in a bit. Uh, hang fire on that. Faz, it's not looking great. It's getting too difficult to be optimistic. Long, long season ahead. Well, now that Liverpool have put a bid in for this other player, it would mean that uh, the road is clear, the path is clear for us to approach Sofia and Amrabah and just make this deal happen. But it all comes down to if we can, if we can get uh, Donny van der Beek moved on to another club but yeah this this player that they've bid it for is a japanese midfielder from stuttgart named wataru endo i hope i've pronounced it right as well a uh, couple of other more super chats as well anthony says respect loyalty integrity selflessness courage united players have none of the none of these disgraceful club falling apart big club laughable anthony he's clearly having a really hard time today sorry anthony have some cold water, you'll feel okay. Um, Lesedi, I think that's how you pronounce your name, says, the crazy thing is that most players just take the pay cut because they really want to just play football. The fact that there are people who would sit on the bench says a lot about our players. This is very good, very, very good. Very good. But you know the thing is, Lesedi, I'll tell you one thing, right, to your comment. From a fan perspective, you are right. From a fan perspective, it's like, well, you make millions anyways, so just, just go and play football. But let's say we're talking about Harry Maguire and Eric Bailly. Respectfully, both of these players are near 30 years old or 30 years, average 30 years old. They are coming towards the latter end of their career and they, they would want to care about money. Let's be very honest. They have families, they have mouths to feed, they want to cash in. They probably have three, four years, five years maybe at the top flight football. Majority of their career is, is gone past. They would want to cash in. If you're a young player on the uh, other hand, then yeah, sure. You might want to be um, you know, lowering down the wages so you can play more football. But um, if you're an older player in your 30s, you'd probably want to just take the money because you, know, you want to cash in whilst you can. Uh, rumor Amrabat has rejected at Liverpool. It's not a rumor. It's, it's obvious. It's such so obvious. Uh, Faz, would you have taken Chris Smalling or Johnny Evans? Um, uh, Rizik Mungal, are you Ricky's cousin by any chance? Because only Ricky would ask me such question. Because Ricky has a very famous video on Chris Smalling, and he also has a very famous quote on Johnny Evans. Uh, this must be Ricky's ricky's cousin from that side of the world maybe um who would i pick i'd pick chris smalling um ronald jacob thank you very much hope you're well thank you for the contribution says cr7 left 16 million on the table and left manchester united that's what you call love for the club not maguire or eric by trying to make the last six 15 million or 700k when 30 million bits come in for scott and maguire people said deny it and now look at us well Ronald, we don't actually know how much Ronaldo got paid. That's not public information. I'm sure Ronaldo got paid something. We just don't know how much. Or maybe he didn't. Maybe he didn't. Maybe Ronaldo didn't get paid anything. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I think I understand the perspective you're coming from. But Ronaldo is also a billion, nearly a billionaire, I think. So Ronaldo isn't short of cash. Um, whereas, and also Ronaldo went to Saudi where he is making a lot of cash. So if you ask me, Ronaldo can sacrifice 15 million. Ronaldo probably spends 15 million on a night out. I won't be surprised. Ronaldo probably spends 15 million on a, on a, on a night out on pizza and drinks. I won't be surprised. I mean, gold, gold, 
crusted pizza. I don't know. But uh, yeah, with Eric Bailly and Harry Maguire, they both won't be making anywhere near what they're making now if they go to their next club. They won't. So you must look at it from that perspective as well. Um, Ten Hag has been let down. He's wasted our club. That's harsh. Very harsh. Um, some, yeah, that, that's very harsh. Part of the problem of our outgoings are the players' decisions, like how Maguire and McTominay rejected West Ham. I don't think they particularly rejected West Ham. I mean, Manchester United rejected Scott McTominay. And um, Harry Maguire never even got to personal terms. Never. Because he wants to pay out first. Sky Sports Seth, I think, said it, uh, that, that the media had exaggerated the deal and the progress of the deal than, than what it actually was. Um, let me see. Amrabat wants United. Faz, for the presenter of the year, you can see us getting power too. Thank you very much for the kind comments, Darren. I appreciate you. But uh, we have some fantastic presenters on the United stand. So I must give credit to them. You know, Adam and Beth, they do a fantastic job. Um, and also, I want to mention, whilst I can here, uh, for the people who asked previously about Charlie, um, yes, Charlie has left um, the United stand, um, unfortunately. And he's moved on to uh, Pastures Afar. Uh, we wish him all the best with his career. We wish him all the best uh, with whatever ventures he takes on. Nothing but blessings and uh, nothing but well wishes for him. But yeah, Charlie has... Uh, left the channel so yeah i just wanted to let people know who were who were asking previously um anyways uh moving on let me see a couple of other super chats loads of super chats today thank you very much Rizik, uh with the super sticker thank you very much sir uh, appreciate you rory says look at romano's tweet before that about amraba uh i did about liverpool but yeah i did I did. I read it out as well. There's, there's no other. There's no other. Yeah, yeah. I did. I did. Liverpool are informed. Yeah, about AD. Yeah, and then now Liverpool have gone and put a bid in. Surprising move. Yeah, I have. Um, unless I've missed one, and the admin can put it in the in the chat. Uh, but I don't think so. Rissik says no relationship to Ricky Fass. <laughs> okay, cool. Um. Moving on, anyways, there's a bit, a uh, couple of um, quotes from Aaron Wan Bissaka uh, via Manchester United official channels that I want to bring up as well. Wan Bissaka on things Ten Hag has taught him. We know Wan Bissaka, by the way, has improved loads in the second half of last season. Massive, massive improvement. But uh, we want to hold him to a high standard. This is the most important thing. We want to. City's losing. Come on. Get in. Absolutely get in. Hold that, City. Sevilla, Sevilla, come on, Sevilla, smash them, absolutely smash them. Come on, Ernestri, get in there, get in there, pay us back, pay us back for what you did to us by smashing. Absolutely. By the way, wait a second, wait a second. What city we're playing today? How come we didn't know about this? How come, how come I never once saw one tweet or one report about Man City playing today? What the hell? UEFA Super Cup final, Manchester City versus City. <laughs> oh, they are so small. <laughs> I didn't even know Man City are playing today. Oh my goodness, I did not even know Man City are playing today. Oh my God, mate. Nobody was reporting it. Nobody was reporting this. Not one, not anything. And I've got my notifications on for so many platforms. I have not seen one thing about Manchester City. Wow, mate. When you're small, you're small. And when you're big, you're big, you know, and... Heavy is the head that wears the crown, right? Uh, we're just big. We're just big. Anyways, anyways, let's not talk about small clubs. Let's let's continue talking about the big clubs. Uh, someone said, Colin says he didn't get paid because he breached his contract. I think you mean in relation to Ronaldo. 
But yeah, I want to touch on this uh, quote on Bissaka as well. On the pitch, just where to be at certain times, be more aggressive going forward and just how I can help the team. That's what Juan Bissaka has mentioned about what Ten Hag has taught him, you know, where certain positions to be in, where to be more aggressive going forward and how he can help the team, which is great. Uh, he also says, since I've been under Ten Hag, the manager has taught me a lot and, you know, and you just want to improve more and keep learning more, especially from someone like him. So I've enjoyed that, which is great. Again, very great. And you know what's what's good as well is is how Ten Hag is improving some of the players. That's important. Very, very important. Because there are certain managers out there that just need ready made, you know, ready made players. They need the players who can come in and do a job for them. Whereas Ten Hag has worked with Rashford, he's worked with Aaron Wan Bissaka, he's obviously going to work with Malassia as well, he's worked with Bruno, he's worked with all the players and trying to improve them however he can. And that's great. That's what we want to see. That's exactly what we want to see. So, yeah, someone says another tweet. Where is uh Where's the admin? Admin, where are you? Well, there's another tweet, someone. Klopp has always liked Amrabat, but he is uh in Florence and not on his way to Liverpool. There is no official offer from the Reds yet. The midfield is always waiting for Manchester United who have asked him to be patient. There you go. That's from Alfredo Padula. So Liverpool, again, I'm really... Uh, actually, I'm not sorry. Suck it. I'm not sorry. Why should I apologise to Liverpool? They can suck it. He doesn't want you. He don't want you. Stop begging. Like, stop stop being a beg. I don't understand Liverpool. Like, why are you not... Why? Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Why are you begging? Like, Liverpool just begging every player. Stop begging. Like, you're, you're a beg. Nobody wants you. Go, 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 yeah, Stuttgart and, and, and those sides, like, go, go, go to those sides, like, please, maybe some players from Saudi might want to join you or, I don't know, Russian leagues or whatever, but please, man, stop begging, don't know why you keep begging, such begs, um, Moving on, let me just make sure, yeah, I'm glad that Eric Tanak is improving, uh, our players and, uh, Bissaka being one of them, I do want to see Eric Ten Hag do a bit more work with Dallow as well because he's had, you know, he's, he's, he's had a new contract, Shaw's had a new contract, so it's important that uh, Eric Ten Hag kind of adds more attributes to these players um, and I think there's been a lot of big conversation about Dalo and Bissaka and who's better than who. I think it's good that both players are up for conversation and it's not a big like difference one is great going forward one is great defensively but we want to work on the weaknesses that's what's important and that's why that's why Eric Ten Hag should be the manager of Manchester United so he can improve these players so we must be patient with him we must we must if Aaron Wan Bissaka can improve in the second half of the season so it, it's absolutely clear that Ten Hag's worked with him and same with Rashford as well if Rashford can do what he did last season was to say uh, you know Ganacho won't come good so again another thing as well people need to be patient with the likes of Ganacho such a young player with loads of talent and I'm very inter interested to see what Ten Hag does with uh, Kubi Maino as well in the future um I don't think there is um, any other bits of news for me to cover. That is pretty much the latest new uh, conversation on, on this Mason Greenwood matter with, with um, all of you. Uh, oh, one second. There's another bit of report that just come out. Fabrice Hawkins reports it uh, from RMC Sport. Eric Bailly uh, has an agreement with Manchester United to let him go on a free transfer. So that's that. Eric, Eric Bailly has an agreement. He might leave on a free. So, yeah, the 700,000 uh, euros that he's uh, wanting probably won't be paid to him, but uh, he's happy to go on a free and, uh, yeah, probably go to another club on a good, decent salary. And I wish him all the best wherever he goes, Turkey, Saudi, wherever he is. Thank you, Eric Bailly, for your services. But I hope, again, Manchester United get this done quick. Eric Bailly wants to leave on a free, make him a free agent, sign on the dotted line, get it done. Um, yeah, Sofia and Amrabat um, read that out on on Alfredo Padula. That's it. Yeah, let's 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 address the elephant in the room, Mason Greenwood and the news that has come out on Mason Greenwood. Um first and foremost, I want to I want to set some boundaries in the chat and with all of you because I want to speak on the matter, but I do not want people to 
attack anyone. And, you know, people people were saying a lot of things when Breath was streaming before, and it was absolutely unnecessary, not needed. It is a matter, uh, in a situation like such, it is a matter of being respectful. It is a matter of being honest, and it is a matter of being logical. We must be united. That's in our name. It's It's not a time to divide it's not a time to point score and it's not definitely not a time to point fingers and you know push someone down to bring someone up so let's all i think all of you that are on the show today i i can at least think you all will have some part of you that is logical right the statements come out from manchester united um i will read it out if 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 uh, some people haven't seen it yet, for the people that may not have seen it, I will read it out. Bear with. Let me go ahead and and uh, bring it up. Hold on. The official statement, Manchester United. Um, following the dropping of all charges against Mason Greenwood in February 2023, Manchester United have conducted a thorough investigation into the allegations made against him. So again, investigation's done. Thorough investigation as well. This has drawn on extensive evidence and context, not in the public domain. So this is based on evidence, and this is based on context that is not open and visible to you and to me. Again, very careful. And we have heard from numerous people with direct involvement or knowledge of the case. So again, not one, not two, numerous, plenty of people, okay? Throughout this process, the welfare and perspective of the alleged victim has been central to the club's inquiries, and we respect her right to lifelong anonymity. Cool, great. We also have responsibilities to Mason as an employee, as a young person who has been with the club since the age of seven and as a new father with a partner we must again be very very careful here he is a father there is a child involved and there is a mother so we must be very respectful and very honest let's not you know let's not start going crazy in the chat contrary to media speculation the decision has not yet been made and is currently the subject of intensive in internal deliberation responsibility ultimately rests with the chief executive officer. Once made, the decision will be communicated and explained to the club's internal and external stakeholders. This has been a difficult case for everyone associated with Manchester United and we understand the strong opinions. This is funny. Manchester United, and we understand the strong opinions it has provoked based on partial evidence in the public domain. So Manchester United are very aware what the public think. Very, very aware. They have clearly stated that in the statement. We ask for patience as we work through the final stages of this carefully considered process. Ah, okay, first and foremost, the most important thing to address here is there will be people that want him back and there will be people that don't want him back. Two wrongs don't make a right in any case, okay? An eye for an eye leaves both men blind. Whatever has happened, the club is going to make a decision in the next few days um, or whatever it is that happens, and you will hear the final verdict. I'm not doing a poll. We're not doing a poll because a poll is a blatant way in a situation like this to divide everyone. Not doing a poll. No poll is needed because the poll doesn't justify what the club does. The poll doesn't justify what... Uh, what um thing he's gonna do someone says yawn yawn boring i must go and watch netflix well let me time you out so you can go and watch netflix go do one because i'm trying to have a logical conversation and i'm not going to have people take the mic absolutely not 
you guys and all of you in the chat need to understand that if he comes back, it's not up to me or you. It's absolutely not up to me and you. It's down to the manager, it's down to the club. Reports have obviously come out from The Athletic and, and et cetera as well that I am going to read out to you all one by one. The first one is uh, that I'm going to read out is The Athletic has been told multiple employees, has been told of multiple employees within Manchester United who are deeply troubled and feel sense of shame by plan, sense of shame by plan laid out for Greenwood and they say they feel club has not fostered an environment where major dec decisions by senior personnel can be freely challenged. So basically what that says is Faz, can we get an opinion on Mason Mason can we get an opinion? Can we have an opinion and Mason too? Yeah, you will get an opinion if you hang fire because it's a one hour show. Don't try it with me today, nobody, because I'm being deadly serious. I want to be logical and honest with you all. So please. It's clear that there are staff members who feel like they can't challenge the club on this decision. They can't. And that's, again, that's, uh, it's, it tells you what it is about the hierarchy of Manchester United. And it's not, it's a very, very toxic environment by, this, by the looks of it. It is. Because your employees in your club should be able to openly challenge you and push back on certain things so you can have a balanced decision on everything. But it's clear that the plan laid out for Greenwood and uh, they say they feel the club has not fostered an environment where major decisions can be challenged, freely challenged. Um, again, another company, these are all sponsors of... Um, Manchester United, uh, etc. Hygiene company Ecolab says, any question relating to the players and the operations of the club, we would refer to Manchester United. We are aware of the topic and are in contact with the club. We have no comment to provide at this time. Simple as that. It's nothing to do with the sponsors as well. Someone says, Faz, you're not logical when it comes to this due to United stand. Yes, I am logical because I am speaking to you. Ain't nobody here holding me hostage. Nobody's here. Again, get it out of your head. If you don't like my opinion and if you don't like my take, stop attaching it that I'm being told to say this because it's never been the case. Absolutely never been the case. So again, stop that as well and grow up. Because I give my opinion, whether you like it or not, that's up to you. But it is most definitely not being told by anyone. So I'm, I'm just being deadly honest with you and take it as it, as it comes from me. Um, kit manufacturer Adidas also said, after inaccurate and speculative report, uh, uh, after inaccurate and speculative reporting within the media, it's important for us to reiterate that Adidas plays no role in any decision made regarding any member of the team or staff at the club. Decisions are exclusively between the club and their employees. Why? I mean, this is nothing This is nothing to do with, uh, with Adidas as well. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see which sponsor wants to pick up Mason Greenwood because I know that Nike had let him go. One commercial partner, for instance, noted no, during a Manchester United game how well-known celebrity was unable to get a guest at Old Trafford uh, owning to past allegations of violence against women. Interesting. Uh, Manchester United did look at potential loan destinations for Mason Greenwood over the summer and his name came up in discussions with Atalanta. I remember. I always said this, right? Remember when he was supposed to go to Atalanta? The Italian top flight side who sold fellow forward Rasmus Hoyland to us on August 5th. So yeah, he was supposed to he was supposed to go to um Atalanta, but that never that never happened. So yeah. Um must Manchester United um organization, independent Manchester United supporters trust who have written to the club as well, who want to speak to senior individuals in Manchester United. So I wanna start off with this. First and foremost, to all the fans who sat and told me that Mason Greenwood topic would not cause a media frenzy, well, you lot were wrong. You were clearly delusional. Very, very delusional. Because I said this time and time and time again, that this is going to cause a very, very huge shockwave in football media or sports media in general. It is. 
Whether you like it or not, whatever your opinion is, this is factual. It is going to. Because whatever happens with Mason Greenwood's situation, it's going to upset one party. One or two. Again, stop saying poll. We're not doing poll. We're not doing poll. It is going to upset one party. I personally think Eric Ten Hag has done a fantastic job with keeping the, bringing the squad together. We have had so many ups and downs with our squad. We have had leaks. We have had this issue, that issue. It's important that Eric Ten Hag is, is able to keep the squad unity. I don't think... I don't think bringing Mason Greenwood back brings positive brings as much positive media attention as much as it's negative. That's one. Number two, this situation was extremely tactical by Manchester United. And I love this, uh, I, I, I hold on, I love this chat. Let me just bring it up, where is it gone? This is a fantastic comment. I know my club very well. And you all probably know, you all know the club very well as well. But I know Manchester United, they are very good at one thing. And it's PR. Absolute PR. Manchester United are the best club when it comes to PR. How are you telling me that Mason Greenwood was tra training in an open play, in an open pitch, out in the public, and someone videoed him? And Mason Greenwood's entourage got upset with them. You're in a public place. You are in a public pitch. There is numerous, absolute numerous indoor pitches, private pitches that you could have gone and trained in, but you did it outdoor. It was, t I, this is my opinion, I think Manchester United played it tactical. Manchester United played it tactical. Why would you let Mason Greenwood train outdoors? So people react to his training videos? That was very tactical, again. Very, very tactical. The same thing with, the, with him and his partner. The same thing about interview. It all seems Manchester United are dropping bits of information here and there to see how the public react. Because clearly in the statement, it says Manchester United are aware of how the public think. So they clearly know. How do they know? They're clearly on social media. They're clearly looking through what, how public are reacting to Mason Greenwood training, to Mason Greenwood's picture with his partner, to this, that, the other, this report, that report, interview. Add two plus two together, and I am not speaking gibberish. I am telling you factual information that is out there. Did or did not people, there was a percentage of fans, there was a, there was a bit of fan base that looked at the Mason Greenwood training videos and said, yeah, this is, this is weird. This is weird. Mason Greenwood, I mean, he's not got the tech like he used to. He's not got the tech like he used to. And he's not going to, by the way. He's not going to. He is absolutely not going to. Why all of a sudden Manchester United want to speak to the women's team now when once the season had ended, there was a one-month gap where there was no football where Manchester United could have gone to the women's team and spoken to them then? Why are they delaying the process? Again, add two plus two. Someone says, now nah, you don't lose technique. He won't be the same player. Call Rigby, he will not be the same player. I promise you, he will not be. And you don't know how long till he becomes the same player. You don't. Nobody does. Because only time can tell. But the years of development that he could have developed and added to his attribute and added to his arsenal, he's not been on the pitch. This is factual information he's not developed in two years because he's not played football you can't lose talent oh god how many times have we seen players move move from club to club and they've done one thing at one club and they've come to one club and it's gone so is Jaden Sancho not talented is Jaden Sancho not talented we know the player he was in Dortmund He's not doing the same things in here in Manchester United. Please, please. I don't think Mason Greenwood is at all going to, going to be the same player. And um, it's a lot of, like I say, it's a lot of development that he could have had and, and, and he's missed out on. Absolutely missed out on. Let me see if there's any super chats I don't want to miss out. Um, 
member for 32 months. Uh, thank you very much, Gabrielle. Um, Luke says, if Mason and his partner can move on, start a family together, why can't others move on? Um, well, there's nothing to say we can't. And there's nothing to say we have to. Both. It's up to the individual fans to decide. Now, yes, they are back together. Yes, by the looks of it, it seems like a hint that he is going to come back to Manchester United. But you will see, you know, what happens. Is he going to come back? <sighs> is he going to come back in a academy perspective? Is he going to get loaned out? We don't know. We don't know. He is not going to be the player you guys think he is going to be. He's not at all. I don't. He's not played two years of bloody football. What the hell are you on about? It's like saying if a runner doesn't run, he's like, I don't, I, it doesn't even make sense. He's not developed. And you're seeing him in one setting then, and you think he's just going to come back and like Manchester United fans don't even have the patience with their own players that are here now. Some of you do not even have the patience with players that are here now. How are you going to have patience with Mason Greenwood? What if he's not firing? And again, it's not going to make sense to you because people want to think one way or the other. People don't have patience with Jadon Sancho. People don't have patience with Anthony. People don't have patience. People are writing off Mason Mount. People are writing off Mason Mount. And you think Mason Greenwood, who's not touched grass for two years, is going to come back and be a certain level of player. Well, we will find out if he is firing or not. If he comes back, he plays. We have to be patient. That's the most important thing. I personally think the squad, I don't think the squad need to need this media attention, need this me negative media attention. Um, someone says, what if... What if Mount scores less goals than Weghorst? Well, what if, what if? We never know what if. What if anything? Um, is there a super chat from someone? Let me just see if I don't miss it. No. No, I've not missed it. There's no there's no super chat. Yeah, it's all a what if. We just have to wait and see. But uh, at the end of the day, the most important thing is we back the manager. If the manager, if the manager uses him, we have to back the manager. And um, that's it. That's simply it. There's nothing other than that we can do. I personally think he's not going to be the same player. Um, I think it's going to take time before he even reaches levels, you think. A young player who's not played a single minute of football in two years, it's not just fitness. And by the way, someone says you don't... The admin as well. I am going to bring the admin up because admin... I think it was the admin who says you don't list technicality. Well, that I promise you, admin, it didn't look like that when he was taking 17 touches to take the ball into the back of the net and the keeper was saving it in the training videos. And it wasn't a 10 second training video. It was more than a 10 second training video. There was numerous training videos. There was numerous training videos. And this is the same player that a lot of people call Starboy, Gunwood, all of these things. He was taking three touches before he took the shot on and the keeper saved it. So please. Uh, and, and again, it's, it's, I want to be balanced. It's a small portion of the video. It's, 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 uh, we've not seen an in, in game footage. We don't know how he is in game. We don't know. We don't know. Um, so only time will tell. If he comes back and he plays for Manchester United, it is what it is. And and just like people think I'm I'm against their opinion, I'm absolutely not. You are free to have your own opinion. And if you feel like you are okay with him coming back, then fair enough. But the factual information is if Mason Greenwood was not the player he is, you wouldn't give a toss. And you have to swallow that, not me. Because if Mason wasn't the player that you guys hold him to, and he's shown us before, you would not give a flying... You wouldn't. You absolutely wouldn't. So, ladies and gentlemen, we all know what is... What is uh, going to happen and we'll see. Ravel Morrison, classic example of bad decisions, effective talent. Talent is not enough. Well, I thought Ravel Morrison is talented. Someone said in the chat be below, you don't lose talent. You don't lose talent. Well, if you're so talented, what happened to Ravel Morrison? Why ain't he at top flight football? 
And Ravel Morrison was one of the players that used to take everybody for a spin. Anybody and everybody on, on his day in training, he would take everybody on for a spin. So, but hey, people are starving. The thing is, again, I am not scared of saying it. Manchester United fans, the ones that want Mason Greenwood back, it seems like the one thing that it is, is you guys are starving for goals. You are absolutely starving for goals. And that's why you want Manchester United back. Uh, sorry, M Mason Greenwood back at Manchester United. That's why. We don't even know if Mason Greenwood is going to play at Manchester United, uh, Steve-O. Let's wait and see if he even comes and scores. Let's wait and see. I think Manchester United have done really well last season, considering all other factors. We won a Carabao Cup and we went to the FA Cup final. I am starving, actually. I need some food. Yes, thank you very much. I am starving, mate. I'll be honest. I, I, I want a I wanna Nando's or something. Um, and and I think there are look there are players that big clubs buy and and it doesn't work out. But the but the club moves on. No player is bigger than Manchester United. Point blank. Period. And someone said, "Will you wear his shirt? Are you are you crazy? I never I never I never ever." buy a player's name on my shirt because I am not a player FC. Except for Cristiano Ronaldo, I will never buy a player's name on the back of my shirt unless the player gifts it to me. I don't buy a player's name. I don't. I'm not player FC. I am Manchester United FC. I have one agenda that is Manchester United winning trophies and Manchester United being the biggest club in the world. That's my agenda. So, no, I don't get players' shirts on the back of my... Uh, this is this, this says Faz. If you don't believe it, it says Faz. There you go. Proof! Proof! It says Faz on the back. Someone, someone get me, someone get me a Nando's. Um, I back Eric Ten Hag as my manager, but I don't back this dis this decision personally. Setting aside morals, just because a player has talent is the saddest part. Well put together, but hey, I respect other people's uh, opinion. I do. Um, I respect everybody who who has an opinion. So we must we must be fair. Hey, Faz, people need to get it in their heads. He isn't a savior they're searching for. Well, Reagan, that's who they, that's a lot of people think, um, that's a lot, of, that's what a lot of people think. So, all will be unfolded in due time. All will be unfolded. We will see what happens. Uh, anyways, anyways, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. I've tried to be as logical with you, and I knew some of my opinions wasn't going to, wasn't going to uh, be, wasn't going to go down well with some people, and it's fine. Uh, some people, someone's... The outdoor specimen says poll, but no, I'm not doing a poll. What's your order in Nando's? Um, full chi How can you eat a full chicken, man? You must, you must love food. I love food too, but I used to be able to eat a full chicken. I don't anymore. Half a chicken, peri rice, chips, broccoli. Broccoli, get your greens in, kids. Get your greens in. Eat your eggplant aubergine and have peaches. They are good for you. Eggplant and peaches. I don't know why people always get triggered when I put eggplant and, and peach emoji in the chat. I don't know why. Eggplant is such a good fruit and peach is such a good fruit. Five a day keeps the doctor away. So make sure you eat your eggplant and make sure you eat your, eat your peach. It's great. I like. I personally like mangoes, but yeah. Um, another super chat. Let me just see if I can bring it up. It's funny how the English have morals. After all, they have done in the world. Freemason, let him play. Thank you very much for your super chat. It's really kind of you for the super chat. But what I will say is, two wrongs don't make a right, and we can't comment on something that happened hundred years ago. Can't. Yeah, hundred years ago, five hundred years ago, shit happened. Guess what? Nobody's proud of it. I'm sure a lot of people are, are not proud of it. But that cannot be attached to this. This is 2023. What happened in the 1800s, 1600s, 500 BC, I don't know, 700 BC, that can be used now, can it? I'm sorry. But you're just attaching what happened then to now. Yeah, put, that's my favorite emoji. Thank you very much, Tom. Eggplant and peach, they're, they're good for your health. Eat them. Eat them. 
anyways, anyways, um, thank you all. I shall catch you on the next one. Have a good evening. Hopefully we can get Amrabat done. If Manchester United are in for Gravenberg, uh, I will be there. I will be there. But take care. Thank you very much for the stream. Thank you, admin. Thank you all. Have a good evening. And uh, let's be logical and let's be united. Take care.